Welcome to our channel folks. In the webinar series that we have been following for some time now, we are seeing how to encrypt data using the AWS KMS service. In today's video, we are going to see a slight variation of that. If you have been following, you might have known that if you want to encrypt a lot of data, you might have to create a data key and then in extract the plain text key from the data key and then encrypt your data keep a safe storage of your data key and it becomes a quite a hassle to automate it or do it continuously for a lot of files or a lot of data that you might have knowing this problem amazon has released something called as aws encryption cli it this wraps up all the entire functionality of creating a data key and then providing the plain text key and then providing the encrypted data itself. So it makes it as simple as you give this command and show it where the file is and then say which key ID that you want to use. Then Amazon does all the hard work and the background and gives you the encrypted text. Likewise, when decrypting also, you just point it at the file where your de uh, encoded text is and then Amazon goes ahead and finds the plain text key, decrypts it and stores it in the location where you say it. So let us go ahead and see how we can use this AWS encryption CLI, a specialized SDK version of it, and how to install it and how to do all the steps that we have seen now. Basically, this encryption CLI is nothing but a Python wrapper over the APIs that Amazon has already defined. And this is uh, available as an installable for different operating systems. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can run it in your uh, a Linux based machine. So we will be installing using the pip command here, which is the Python installer. So basically we just go ahead and install the CLI now. And before installing, I just wanted to show you my current environment in the current directory that I have. I have a uh, file which is called as a confidential data text, which is having some data as you can see here. And then a couple of directories that I have created already called as encrypted data and the decrypted data where the respective data will go and sit in when we are trying to encrypt or decrypt it. So let us go ahead and install it. So the command is something like pip. I'm using a Python 3.x version. If you're using 2.7, you can just say pip install AWS encryption SDK CLI and it's going to do the magic there. So once it is installed, you can go ahead and check the version of it just to be sure that everything is installed correctly and then uh, uh, if there is a problem, then you have an error like that. The correct command is nothing but AWS encryption hyphen CLI and hyphen hyphen version. And if, since we have installed it and we get the version. So the next step is going ahead and using this command and encrypting the confidential data file that you see here. So let's do that. Since you are following the webinar series, uh, you might have already known how to create a key and how to create an alias. Let, I'm going to make an assumption here and say that you have already have an alias for your key. If not, you go ahead and create the key and set up your alias and set your memory for key ID variable to this value so that we can follow this rest of the tutorial. So let us set, us the, set up the key ID in memory now. Now we have done that. So next step is to go ahead and encrypt it. The syntax is something like what you see on the screen. We use the AWS CLA command followed by the encrypt option. And we are saying the master key is nothing but the key ID that we see here or we set it up just now. And then encryption context is nothing but a key value pair of metadata that you tell Amazon saying this data that you're encrypting or this you know, whole information is relevant to this one. You can say environment equal to prod or this data equal to confidential or super secret or or general public available information. So this is just a metadata that it is recommended to have it. So when you're decrypting also, when you pass on this information and when Amazon decrypts that information, it will verify whether the key value pair is matching and it becomes a secondary validation for the decryption activity also. So the metadata output, all this information, what is the key ID, what is the context and everything will be stored in this location. So and the last two options is obvious, the input file, what is the data that you're going to encrypt and output where you want to store it. So let's just go ahead and do that. And now it has uh, completed its process. If we go to this directory, if I do ls-l, we find that there is a file. And if I go ahead and more that file, we find that it is encrypted. So 
our job has been successfully completed and halfway through it. So now let us see how we can decrypt this data and see whether we can successfully decrypt it with the key ID that we had just now created and with the same command. The decryption text is almost similar to the encryption format. We are just adding the option as a decrypt and we are saying the, uh, the encryption context is all the same and where you want to give the metadata. Remember if the metadata file is already there, the input that is generated by this command gets appended to that comment and then uh, you are saying the input file is an encrypted file and then put it into the decrypted data folder. So let us do that and if I go ahead and do an ls l of decrypted we see a file, let us mode this file. Just to be sure whether uh, we have got all the data that is necessary is, uh, is correct, I'm going to do a diff here. And this is our source file. And this is the file that we got encrypted and decrypted. And uh, looks like uh, I just missed out the path here, full path. Just add that. And you see here, it just comes back to prompt. And that means that everything completed successfully and there is no difference between the source file and the destination file. So that is how you use the AWS encryption CLI to encrypt and decrypt using your KMS keys. And in fact, it is using a data key in the background. So if you have any problems, go ahead and put them in the comment section. Let us learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.